Okay, so welcome everybody. Oh, new person. Welcome Jessica. Uh, welcome Jim Dinushi. Um, so uh, welcome to MAT 1350F Topics in Not Theory. Uh, I'm Dror Barnatan, you probably already know it. You probably also know the meeting times, the URL, I'm sure you found it, but just in case it's drobn.net slash 20-1350. Uh, I'm very briefly going to repeat what I said in the uh, graduate course orientations uh, a few days ago. So basically, superficially, uh, the purpose of knot theory is to study knots. Uh, and one thing to study is whether they are the same or not. So, I mean, here is a trefoil. Is it the same as the unknot? Can you deform one to get to the other, or are they genuinely different? How do you prove that they are genuinely different? Um, uh, likewise, here is the trefoil, and here is, here is its mirror image. Are they the same or not? By the way, I hope, so I'm, 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 I think the main way that I want you to look at me is uh, via the video, so the, the video feed. But I also share the screen. So if you want to a higher resolution picture of the screen, you should be able to see it. And also, uh, probably you should make me, the picture of me, full screen. Now, I don't know, each of you is viewing me in a different way, so I don't know how you would do it. Each one will have to, but, but something like right-click and then pin this video or something like that should make me full screen, and then you should be able to read what's on the board. If you cannot read what's on the board, please complain. And if you complain, please do it in voice, because I'm actually not following the chat. It's too much to... Too, too much to keeping to track in one, in, in one, at one time. Anyway, so whether knots are the same, and then another question is whether a given knot is the boundary of a surface, and here is an example of a knot which is a boundary of the surface, of a surface, and then what's the genus of that surface, and then there are various other classes about, questions about knots, okay? And uh, so we will learn all sorts of ways to answer these questions, and we will also learn what the questions are, uh, but the true motivation is more like number theory. So, in number theory, there is like Fermat's last theorem that says that you cannot have an equality like that. One number to the fourth plus another is equal to a third. Okay? But actually, there are solutions to the same question if you are looking for a sum of two Power, fourth powers is equal to another sum of two, of two fourth powers. And here is an example. And, you know, these are numbers. These are things you can do with numbers. Who cares? The answer is no one. The real, the real reason we care is because uh, this leads us to a, a, a huge amount of interesting mathematics. If, it, if it's number theory, we're led to algebraic geometry and automorphic forms and various things in analysis. If it's not theory, we are led to topology, combinatorics, algebra, homological algebra, representation theory, algebraic topology, differential geometry, quantum field theory, computer algebra, and more. And not all of these things I will do in this class, but, but, but there will be a taste of many of them. What exactly will be done, I'm not 100% sure. Here is a list of possible topics. I know what I plan to do today. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, in following classes, I'm less sure. It's a little bit dependent on uh, the kind of faces that I will see. And speaking of faces, I, in as much as possible, I hope you can turn the video on. Basically, it's extremely unpleasant to speak to a camera. It's much more fun to speak to a group of people that are looking back at me and are either smiling or crying. And I, I mean, I, and, and I learn something from whichever way, whichever one it is. Okay. And by the way, you will see that most of the time I'm not facing the camera. Now I'm facing the camera. 
but you will see that most of the time I'm not facing the camera and the reason is that I'm facing you and you're on a monitor a little bit angled from the camera, camera. okay? Uh, so if possible video on, though, you know, if the only place where you can watch this uh, class is while sitting on the toilet, then please video off, okay? Or, you know, if for any other reason you cannot keep the video on, then don't, okay? Uh, on the other hand, sound should be mostly muted because, you know, if, uh, you know, your, your, your friends, uh, your housemates call you, I, shouldn't, I, I, I don't need to know about it, okay? Uh, good. Uh, all classes will be recorded and you should be aware of it. But it's only my side that is recorded, not your side. So, uh, however, sound might be recorded also from you. So, no, not might, will be recorded also from you. So if you ask a question, your voice will be recorded, but not your eyes, okay? Um, you know, if you don't want even your voice recorded, then let me appoint a volunteer who will read out questions from chat. I don't know if it will be necessary, but if necessary, uh, can I... Is somebody here definitely not shy? Jesse? I can do it. Okay, you know what? It doesn't matter. If, if a question appears on chat, read it out loud and say it appeared on chat. Okay, so it's not your question, but somebody else's. Good, so let's start with today. So today we will talk about just a brief introduction to knots, a little bit about knots colorings, and a little bit, a little bit about the Jones polynomial. So uh, first of all, a few non-obvious examples. So it should be a bit hard on your screen to tell what, are, what exactly is this knot. Okay? Because I'm not sure if the crossings show clearly enough, do they? Okay, good. Uh, so, you know, when, when, when you're looking at the trefoil knot, oops, what happened? When you're looking at the trefoil knot like here, it's kind of, you kind of expect it to be different from the knot. But some examples are not that obvious. So, uh, is this knot equivalent to the R knot or not? Well, it actually is, but it's very hard to see. I mean, uh, by the way, this PDF file will be on the web, or is in fact already on, on accessible, but I will make it clear where it is very soon, or after class, so you will be able to look at it more closely if you will wish. But anyway, this is in fact equivalent to that, but it's very hard to see. And this one, actually, can you even tell where is the difference? I think the only difference is this crossing here. This one, sorry, this one versus that one. One crossing was flipped. This is not equivalent to the R knot. Can you, I mean, how would you tell when it's big and complicated? Furthermore, you know, once I told you that this is equivalent to the R knot, you realize, and it's equivalent by a kind of very complicated motion where you start by sliding this part below everything that's above it and slide it out and then something else can be undone and so on. But, uh, but once I tell you that there is a complicated way to get from here to here, what guarantees that there isn't a complicated way to go from here also to here? Or said differently, or, 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 or maybe differently, what guarantees that there isn't a, a way to start from the R-naught, 
do something very, very, very complicated until it becomes something like that or even harder, and then undo this in a different way and find that, in fact, the a naught via, via something very complicated is equivalent to uh, the trefoil knot. What guarantees that you don't have an equivalence of uh, this to this, and then this to that, and therefore that to that? I mean, well, I mean, that's what mathematical proof is about. We'd better prove it at some point. Maybe I'll give a, an example. So there is, uh, there is the famed perco pair of knots. So here is the famous perco pair. So uh, these two knots appeared in knot tables for, I don't know exactly for how long, for, for dozens of years at least as separate knots. So people tabulated knots and these two appears, uh, appeared as separate ones. Okay? Uh, and then came uh, Perko, Kenneth Perko, in I think the early 70s. He was an undergrad in Princeton University and he, seem, and he noticed that there is a simple way to go between them. So everybody was wrong for very, very long. We'd better have proofs if we, if, we, if we really are to assert that these two things are different. And finally, uh, here is a very, very complicated a knot. You know, it looks like a total mess. You have no idea what's going on. In fact, it's trivial. And maybe uh, one last thing before we really start. So here is a mosaic of the first 250 distinct prime knots, whatever that means. And uh, again, separating them seems like a complete impossibility. Uh, we, we better have some techniques. Okay, so um, are you with me? Good. So, um, you know, um, almost always uh, the first lecture in a knot theory class is the second lecture, is what logically is the second lecture. And the first lecture is never given. Uh, and in fact, uh, not only it's never given, for a reason it's never given, because really it should take about 10 lectures, and they're always skipped. So, let me follow the tradition and skip the first lecture, uh, but only tell you what's in it. Okay? So, what's in it is a definition. What is a knot? That's always skipped, and for a good reason. So definition, a knot, sorry, a knot is a continuous uh, embedding of an interval. So a continuous one-to-one uh, -one, uh, map, sorry, not of an interval, of a circle. So uh, let's call it gamma going from a circle into, well, you know, fancy people say into the three-dimensional sphere, but if you add or remove one point from, from, from the target space, it turns out it makes no difference, so I will be non-fancy, and instead of going to the three-dimensional sphere, I will go into uh, the three-dimensional R3, okay, modulo, so I divide the space of such embeddings, uh, one to one, or no, let me say it differently, uh, modulo homotopies, and maybe I should add the word 
continuous homotopies are of such things. Meaning modulo deformations of such things that remain continuous, that are continuous with respect to both the time parameter and the arc length parameter, and that are always one-to-one. -one. Okay? So, uh, example, ah, here's another advantage uh, that I'm at home. Um, it's very easy for me to find a cable. I just open a drawer and, and pulled out an HDMI cable. Okay? So, example, here is a knot. It's not a very interesting one. And actually, let's make it more interesting. So here is again a knot. So it's embedding of a, an embedding of a circle, a continuous embedding of a circle R, uh, into R3. Modulo deformations of such things. So two things are considered the same if you can get from one to the other via a deformation. Okay, via a homotopy. Well, so why is this lecture always skipped if I just gave it? Why is this definition always skipped if I just gave, the, gave it? The reason is that this is a wrong definition. It's the intuitively natural definition, but it's completely wrong. Why is it wrong? So take the trefoil knot. Let me, let, let, let me make it a long knot right now, going from infinity to infinity. Uh, okay, so going from outside of your picture to outside of your picture, you can imagine that it gets closed outside of the picture. So you just don't see that it's closed. Okay? And now I claim that it's actually trivial. All I have to do in order to show that it's trivial is to pull it tighter and tighter and tighter and the so-called knot or the, the knotty part, the curved part in the middle, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until continuously, poof, it becomes one point and that's a completely continuous process and by this process the trefoil knot became, um, became trivial. Is, is, is the picture clear? So basically whatever knot you have, if you pull it basically shrink it until it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually one point, it continuously disappears. Okay? There is nothing not continuous about this process. So this is a wrong definition and if you want to make it a correct definition, you have to add, uh, you have to modify it. So, one way to modify it is to replace it by smooth. Okay? And then you have to speak about smooth. So continuous here should also be erased and be replaced by smooth. Another way to modify it is to replace it by uh, so-called piecewise linear, PL, which stands for piecewise linear, so basically you draw a knot using only uh, pieces of straight lines. Okay? Uh, and then of course here you have to uh, switch also to piecewise linear and there are other alternative, alternatives. For example, you can say that an equivalence is not a motion of one knot to another, but rather a motion of the whole space, of the ambient space. So, in other words, rather than, so, you, you know, if I want to define when is this equivalent to that, one way is to say I want to deform this to that. Another way to say it is to say, well, this lives inside R3, so, it lives inside some cube, or, you know, uh, infinite cube. Uh, this one, I guess I should have uh, put it a bit farther away. So, uh, this one also lives inside some uh, three-dimensional space. 
and then equivalence could have been a map between these two spaces, so a map phi, no deformation whatsoever, a single map phi, which maps R3 into R3, and carries this knot into that knot. That seems like a, a also a reasonable intuitive definition for a knot. And the part that is skipped is that all of these definitions, except the ones I gave at the beginning, agree with each other. Well, all of them are, are non-trivial and they all agree with each other. And that takes a lot of work. And hence I'm skipping it. And, then, and the work is sort of differential geometric in nature and local in nature and not terribly interesting. Nothing exciting happens. So basically you start from a smooth knot, you use the tubular neighborhood theorem which you might have learned about in differential geometry or in multivariable calculus which somehow uses the uh, implicit function theorem in order to uh, construct a neighborhood of an embedded arc that looks like a tube and then within that tube everything looks okay so within that tube you can do simple-minded things and then you uh, you don't want to do that believe me okay so lecture one is skipped but let me tell you about a corollary from lecture or not a corollary maybe the one outcome of uh, lecture one. So the one useful outcome of lecture one is a, a why, did, why did this line appear appeared here? I don't know. So a combinatorial, so at the end we want to do algebra in combinatorics, or at least that's what we want to do today. So at the end you get a combinatorial uh, definition of knots. And here is the definition. So uh, uh, definition, or le let me uh, say it like this. So a knot diagram is a picture drawn in the plane of a knot. Okay? Uh, so, again, I'm skipping the formal definition, but the intuition is very clear. Okay? So, it's a picture, so it's a graph drawn in the plane. However, so, so, however, wherever uh, so, so the graph has quadrivalent vertices, so vertices of over order four, and at the quadrivalent vertices, one of the um, uh, uh, strands, so one of the, well, formally speaking, if you have a vertex here, then there are two pairs of edges coming into it and one of them is designated as the upper pair and the other is designated as the lower pair. And if I wanted to complete the definition, I could, um, I could, uh, but, but again, it's, it's, it's labor with no fun and I'm not going to do it. Okay? So, it's a picture like this, again, strictly speaking, it's a quadrivalent graph with various decorations on the vertices and various uh, and a planarity properties but I think the picture is enough um, even here there are various issues so uh, you know the Jordan curve theorem says well very very complicated curves could be trivial Okay, and I'm com I will completely ignore the Jordan curve theorem. I will not I, I will not deal with issues that have to do with how complicated that these lines could be. So uh, this line, instead of being a nice 
uh, arc as it was could have been a, a, a whole mess, I will ignore such issues. Uh, also, um, whenever you're talking about continuous things, um, various infinities can arise. So, you know, if you have one line and another line that looks like a, a sine curve, they may, may intersect each other infinitely many times. Usually, or there are tools in differential geometry to move such things away from each other or to smooth such things uh, 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 so that the inter so, so that this is somehow equivalent to uh, a, a situation in which only a finite number inter of intersections occur. I will ignore such issues. So, a knot diagram is a quadrivalent graph in the plane with various decorations and various properties, and uh, you can think of all the arcs as if they are as is. Nothing terrible happens to them. So that's uh, property one, or, or that's uh, part one of the definition, and part of two of the definition is the so-called Rydemeister, Ride Meister uh, moves, and the Rydemeister moves are the following three moves. So, if you have a kink inside a knot diagram, so really when I'm drawing a picture like this, I mean this is a part of a picture of a knot diagram. This could complete into a knot in some arbitrary way. And then uh, the first Rydemeister, sorry, I wanted to switch back to blue. So the first Rydemeister move, also called R1, says that whenever you have a kink like this, it's equivalent to a line without a kink. A kink. Topologically, this should be obvious, right? Here is my, you know, maybe I should have used an even wider uh, cable. But, you know, if you have a kink, I can pull it straight and the kink disappears. Uh, the second Rydermeister move says the following. If you have a situation like this, then, you know, I, I don't know what to name this situation. Maybe the standard name is the left-hand side of a Rydermeister 2 move then this is equivalent by a so-called Rydermeister 2 move to, so basically you can pull the upper strand to the left, the lower strand to the right, and this is equivalent to that. And I run out of space, so I need to create another page to my uh, presentation. Uh, and I'm sorry about the time that this takes. On the other hand, you know, this is equivalent to, uh, if it wasn't an online class, uh, I'd at some point be picking up my uh, eraser and erasing the white, the, the, the blackboard. So, okay. Anyway, and then the third move is the following. So, uh, if I have a crossing and underneath it, a strand, so a strand that starts on the left, ends on the right, passes under the whole picture in the three-dimensional sense, but also below everything uh, in a two-dimensional sense, then this is equivalent via the so-called Rydermeister 3 move to, so if you have a picture like this, you can slide uh, this lower strand up below this crossing until it goes above. So basically it goes like this. Okay? And then uh, the theorem, which I will not prove, is the following. Uh, I will not prove, but you can look it up in various textbooks, okay? So, uh, a theorem, a knot, 
well, of course I cannot prove the theorem. I haven't even formally defined what's a knot. I gave you a kind of, I told you there are multiple definitions and I'm not even choosing which one it is. So a knot is the same as, or said differently, the set of all knots is the equivalent to the set of all knot diagrams modulo the equivalence relation generated by those Reidemeister moves. So modulo Reidemeister moves. Okay? So the question we started from, or one of the questions we started from, is the trefoil knot equivalent to the R knot becomes the following question. Can you find a sequence of Reidemeister moves, those three moves that I've shown before, again, let me uh, uh, again display them very briefly, so can I find a sequence of kink removals, of, of, of bygone removals, and of, well, Reidemeister threes, that brings this picture to that picture? So now the question became combinatorial, but it is still extremely difficult, because uh, a sequence of Reidemeister moves could make this more and more and more and more complicated. You know, I could um, uh, uh, erase uh, uh, this bit and replace it by uh, something that goes like this using a Reidemeister... Oops, no, I want it to go the other way. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I could replace it by, you know, I could do it more, well, by, by, by doing two Reidemeister moves, I could replace it by this. And then I could do Reidemeister three moves, I, I could make it arbitrarily complicated. There are, it's basically an infinite question because I can make, because the, the space of diagrams is infinite. I could make it very, very, very complicated and then potentially reduce it using other Reidemeister moves to this picture. Okay? So, how do you prove that the trefoil knot is not equivalent to uh, the A knot? So, the answer is you find so called knot, sorry, knot uh, invariance. So, What's a knot invariant? A knot invariant is a function, so this is a function on the space of knots, a function on the space of knots, but at least for today, uh, since I'm presenting knots using knot diagrams, it will be a function on the space of knot diagrams, so a function on uh, the uh, set of uh, knot uh, diagrams which hopefully is computable in some reasonable way. I mean, if it's not computable, then the whole thing is pointless. So I'll add the word, I could add the word computable, but then I'll have to define what computable means and I'd rather not get into it. So, a function on the space, on the set of knot diagrams with values, well, I actually don't care where, but, but with values in some set in which equality is easy to decide, right? The problem with knots is that equality is hard to decide. I want a function into some space in which equality is easy to decide. So, with values in, so what kind of spaces are easy to decide? I don't know, the integers, 
uh, maybe polynomials, maybe uh, matrices, something where if you two see, see two things and, 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 and they appear equals and they are equal. Okay? Uh, and with the property and such that and that does not change uh, if, so this, this is what invariant means, so it does not change if you uh, perform, sorry, perform uh, Reidemeister moves. Okay? And why is it good? Suppose you had such a function, let's call it uh, lambda, and suppose we computed that lambda of the trefoil knot is equal to, I don't know what, 9. And suppose I computed that lambda of the unknot is equal to mm, maybe 3. Then I know that the trefoil is not equivalent by a sequence of Reidemeister moves to the unknot because if it was equivalent, Lambda would not change values. That's the invariance property. property. But, at the, but Lambda does have different values on the two things. So they're not equal. Okay? Is, is, is it clear? Are we still good? Good. So uh, let me again erase the blackboard or more precisely create another one. Uh, so I want to append the page and uh, use the new page to define such a lambda. So, uh, definition. So, example. Uh, this is the so-called three coloring example and it's so easy that it must appear as the fir in the first class of every knot theory class. Okay? So the three coloring lambda is the following. You set lambda of a knot diagram D to be the number of legitimate sorry uh, legitimate legitimate three colorings of the diagram D. But I have to tell you what's a three coloring of a diagram. So a three coloring, a three coloring uh, is an assignment of colors to the arcs of the diagram. So an uh, assignment of uh, colors and the word three here means that I'm allowing you to use three colors so the set of colors consists of three colors red, green and blue to uh, the uh, arcs of D uh, but I have to tell you what, what are the arcs of D. So, an arc of a diagram is, well, a piece of the diagram that can be drawn without lifting your finger. Okay? I actually draw it while lifting my finger several times because I'm not that talented. But in principle, if, if, if I was talented, I could draw it in like three finger strokes. One, two, and three. Okay? So, uh, this is an arc, uh, this is an arc, and this is an arc. 
And maybe the uh, last thing to say, what is legitimate? When do I call a coloring legitimate? So uh, I'll say it here. So legitimate means that in every crossing, so in every crossing, if I draw a crossing, it involves potentially three arcs, one, two, and three. So either they are all the same or they are all uh, different. Okay, so in a crossing like this, either only one color appears, appears, or all, sorry, all three. So, for example, uh, should I try to be fancy? Yeah, I'll try to be fancy, but I'm running out of time. So, this one is legitimate. Uh, 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 this one is legitimate, but this one is not legitimate. Okay? So, this one is good, this one is good, three colors appear, this one is no good, only two colors appear. I hope you can, you can see colors, by the way. Okay. You know... I can see colors on the screen share, but not on the camera. You know, uh, I, could, I could make it uh, explicit, okay? So, here everything is red. Here this is red, this is green, this is blue. And here this is red, this is blue, and this is blue. Okay? So let's compute a uh, lambda of... Hello. Yes. So I guess you want to make the last correct uh, across. Yeah, no, this is... Oh, sorry, uh, you're right. Uh, this is uh, in... This is not legitimate. This is an X. You're right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, let's compute some lambdas. So, what is lambda of the, of the A naught? Well, so, there is only one arc here. It has to be colored in one color. There are no crossings, so no conditions. So, lambda here is equal to 3. Uh, let's compute lambda of the trefoil knot. So, here we have two things, or two possibilities, okay? So, here is the trefoil knot once again, and suppose I picked um, um, this color to be red. I, I could have started with any other color, okay? If this one is also red, then like at, at this crossing, you have already two reds, so the third one must be red too. Okay? On the other hand, uh, if... Um, so, on the other hand, if I uh, start with this one red and choose the second one to be blue, then now at this crossing you have red and blue, so the third um, line going through it must be green. So this must be green. Okay? And if you look at it, this is a legitimate coloring. So now what have we got? Here we have three possibilities. Instead of red, I could have chosen blue or green. So overall there are three possibilities. Here, the first color has three possibilities. The second color, well, I'm choosing the possibility in which the second color is different from the first. So there are only two possibilities left. 
and then the third color is determined. So it's three times two times one. So this gives me three, this gives me six. Oh, and what a mistake, I already told you the answer. This is, uh, well, you know, sorry. I mean, this was supposed to be a, a, the, the, the result of a complicated computation. Three plus six is equal to nine. Well, since three is, equal to, is not equal to nine, these two are not the same, the, but only after I prove that they are, that this is an invariant. So it remains to show that the number of three colorings is an invariant. Uh, let's do that. Uh, and I think that's the last thing that we will do today. Uh, sorry, I wanted to go here and create another page. Uh, and good. So, uh, why is this an invariant? So, let's think about the three Reidemeister moves. So, the first move is this one. In this case, so this is equal to a single line. In this case, suppose this was colored red. Now, only two arcs appear in this crossing because the red arc curves back and, and passes through this crossing twice. So it cannot be that all three colors will appear here. So if we have a legitimate coloring, it must be uh, that uh, that the bottom is that, that, that this, that this uh, crossing has only one color on it, so the bottom must be colored red as well, and so everything here is colored red. If everything here is colored red, then you can color the corresponding arc here also red. And really, what I've told you is that I've established a bijection between the legitimate three colorings of the left-hand side with the legitimate three colorings of the right-hand side. And since there is a bijection, the number is the same. Next. Um, so, uh, let's look at uh, the second uh, Reidemeister move. So, this move, and uh, ask ourselves if we can establish a bijection between the colorings of the left-hand side and the colorings of the right-hand side. So, suppose the left-hand side is colored uh, red and red. So, suppose at the top you have two reds. Then, this red continue. well, sorry, so, so this crossing has already two reds on it, so this must be red, this must be red, and therefore this must be red, and this must be red, and the corresponding coloring on the right-hand side will be everything is red. That's easy. But then there is a second possibility, and the second possibility is, suppose the colors at the top here were different. So suppose, say, this was green and this one was blue. Well, if this is green and this is blue, then down here I must have green because it's the same arc, but um, down here, since this must be three colored, then this must be red. And now I have red and green, so green must pass, pass to here, and uh, here I have red and green, so this must be blue. And the outside of this, so inside I have a little bit of a mess. But outside I have green on the left, green on the left, blue on the right, blue on the right. So I could color the right hand side in the same way. Uh, sorry, not red, uh, but uh, green and blue. And this will match with whatever I have at, in the rest because 
because the interface with the rest of the picture, so the, 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 the vertices, have not changed colors. So, there is, so again, I have a bijection between the colorings. And I'm out of time, so I cannot tell you that um, uh, the third Reidemeister move uh, also has a similar behavior, but if I had time, and in fact I will not do it, I mean, I think maybe I'll leave it as an exercise. So, uh, let me just write it this way, Reidemeister 3 is an exercise, it's a very easy one, it's along the same lines, and, uh, and thus we have proven that the trefoil is different from the a uh, and we have our first theorem for, for this year. That's it. Any questions, any comments? We're out of time, so, you know, you can log out, but any questions, any comments? Okay. Hi. Um, isn't the trivial knot not a four-valent graph? So you are right. Strictly speaking, I should have made an exception for the trivial knot. Okay. Okay, so, as I mentioned, I've skipped the first chapter. The first chapter is doing ev all the uninteresting details kind of formally and correctly, and it's just not interesting. So we're skipping it. Okay. Uh, excuse me? Yes. Um, you say knots are bijection to the planar graph modeled the right and left move. Yes. Do you need to move a module planar isotopics? So when, I, so when I said a planar graph, I implicitly meant that, um, that uh, where did I show it? I, I implicitly uh, meant that um, uh, curvy arcs are the same as straight arcs. And so for the sweet coloring of the trifoil, yeah. it seems to me that some coloring are the same because you can rotate it. I mean, if you color it RGB counterclockwise, you can color it also GBR. You can rotate it from one channel. So, um... Uh, the coloring invariant is defined on a fixed diagram. So the diagram is already placed in the plane and cannot be moved. And such a diagram has a coloring, has a, a coloring number. Okay? And then I claim that the coloring number does not change if I do moves. Okay. Okay, so the number of colorings is 9 because the diagram is fixed. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's excellent question. I can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, you, your microphone is at a very low volume. How about now? Better. Uh, this, so three, col three colorings cannot distinguish between a knot and its reflection, right? Because oh, it's like, a, uh, the a terrible invariant. The, the, this is the worst you can do. It, it, it's very, very quick to define, but it's an awful invariant. If we had done well on the first class, you know, the whole course will be unnecessary. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's quit. I'll stop the video and uh, hopefully I'll see you uh, on Friday. Bye. Thank you.